Hey everybody, this is Adam with High C Films. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about the SSD to CFast adapter. Um, this is a slight review. Everything you see here with me talking, this is in RAW recorded right to my SSD. And then all the other shots um, are a mixture of RAW and on my phone because unfortunately I sold my second camera recently. So um, before we begin, I just want to say that this is based on my experiences so far. Um, I've done a lot of testing, um, I've done a lot of reading, and hopefully this will help someone. If I'm wrong on anything that I go forward to say, please let me know. I would love to be aware that I messed up somehow. Let's talk about SSDs. The short answer is they all should work. There should be no problem whatsoever. Um, the long answer is some of the older ones and um, ones nearing the end of their lifespan may not work. And, and the reason this is, it's because of how SSDs work. Generally speaking, um, you can think of them as, uh, and this is very broad strokes here, you can think of them as a tiny little uh, computer. And within it, it has a little memory cache that it dedicates 5% of its total uh, uh, size to. And that memory cache kind of acts like a RAM. So when you're actually recording onto the card, it's first recording onto that, then it's dumping from that onto the memory. So if you don't give it time to kind of catch up, then what's going to end up happening is the, the processor uh, within the SSD is going to start to decide, do I have to unload this and then um, go directly onto the um, SSD or do I have to uh, just directly record onto the memory of the SSD ignoring that there's a cache there. Now, in reality, what does this mean? The, the, the actual, you know, memory on the, like the actual hard drive space on the SSD should be fast enough to record any RAW whatsoever. Now, one thing you can take note of is if you want to be on the super safe side, you can spend a bundle more and get pro line of SSDs, which kind of um, have, uh, it's kind of like an expanded cache, I guess, but basically it just can rec write directly onto the thing instead of having some sort of memory cache. Um, and that's my understanding of how SSDs work based on my research. Please let me know if that's wrong. Batteries. What batteries can we use and why is it important that we get a proper battery? Um, Let's start with the fact that my SSD is a crucial um, MX300 500 megabyte, uh, 500 gigabytes, um, and it is rated at 1.7 amps. Now that is my SSD. I know that there's some M.2 that are also 1.7 amps. I'm not sure if that's every SSD. I I haven't paid any attention to that ever. This is the first time I've ever thought about looking at that. So check what your SSD is rated at um, and go from there. Um, I'd rather be safe than sorry and, and use a battery that has at least 5 volts, 2 amps. Um, that being said, I mean, if for whatever reason you have a battery that's giving 1.7 amps, that should be fine. Um, now, the reality of the situation for me has been the battery I use hasn't seemed to move whatsoever after almost five hours of continuous use. Um, and in reality, it should only last three hours if it was drawing a continuous 1.7 amps. What I think is going on here is that it spikes to 1.7 amps once in a while, but for the most part, it's well below one amp. Um, does that mean you should use anything that's delivering one amp maximum? Like any battery that's delivering one amp maximum? No. Um, stick to anything two or more. Um, if it's less than two amps, it's not going to work for you. So let's talk about what kind of batteries we can use. There's three main types, starting with V-mount. Um, V-mount's going to work really well for you. Um, you can Velcro the SSD right onto the uh, onto the V-mount, and as long as the port that you're plugging your USB thing into is rated at two amps or more, you should have no problem whatsoever. It's probably, in my opinion, the safest option. The second option I see people talking about a lot lately is the new uh, third-party batteries for the C200 um, by uh, SWIT. And the reason people are talking about these is because they have a USB port in them. 
that's incredible, it's really awesome, it's probably not gonna work for you. And the reason being is because that USB port is only rated at one amp. Now, I could be wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong because that's an awesome option. And if you have one, I, I'd I would ask you to thoroughly test and let me know if I'm wrong. And the last option, the option I'm going with specifically, um, is uh, those little tiny phone chargers, you know, the um, uh, like USB like pocket chargers. Um, almost everybody nowadays has them because our phones suck and they don't last as long as they should. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Now, some will work, some won't work. Um, how do we know which ones are going to work, which ones aren't? It's really a trial and error basis. Um, I have two working theories based on some of my tests. Um, these could be completely wrong, but I'll go through them really quickly. The first is like a lag theory. Um, some chargers, they respond once they see something trying to draw a charge. And as soon as they see that, they'll turn on and start giving power. Um, other ones, you have to press a little button on it to let it know that, hey, you know, something's plugged in. I would probably stay away from the ones that have to register because m m if my theory on the fact that the SS, if my thought on, on rather instead of theory, um, on the SSDs drawing very little power, um, it might not register that it's plugged in all the time and it might stop and give you an error. Um, the ones that you have to actually click a button to let it know, hey, there's something plugged into it, start giving power. I would say they're better but they're not foolproof, they would still, I would have this like lag theory kind of a, a situation going on um, that's might, you know, stop at some point. Um, a second theory as to why they might not work, um, I'm calling the uh, CalCom theory. And that's basically like, CalCom is a standard that's been around for a very long time um, for charging phones. And a lot of these USB batteries and a lot of these USB chargers for your phone, they're gonna give out some um, higher voltage than what it says. It's not actually five volts that's coming out of there from what I've read. Um, it's actually an increased voltage and they do this to charge your phone faster. Now, is this great? I mean, for your phone, sure. For your SSD, I, I would shy away from it. Um, and instead of delivering the amount of amps it says it delivers, it's probably not delivering that because it's probably using those the amps that it says it delivers within the battery itself to increase the voltage. I assume. I could be wrong on this and if I am, great, but from my tests, the chargers I use that use Calcom, the newer standards of Calcom, do not work. The ones that use older standards, which is basically just, you know, a low amount of amperage and the same amount of voltage but they use amperage to charge it, works. And I've further tested this theory by using my uh, OnePlus, I have a OnePlus here, um, and they have the dash charge. That is not Calcom, that is straight up, if it says five volts, four amps, it's five volts, four amps. So I was able to go four hours nonstop with that, um, no errors whatsoever, and I repeated that test several times. Um, beyond that, um, I have three, I have three uh, USB chargers and I tested every single one of them. Both of the ones with the older standard which deliver just the higher amps and not a higher voltage work just fine. The newer one that I have that has the newer standard um, does not work. Now the batteries I rely on are Anchor. I'm not saying you have to get Anchor whatsoever but if you're gonna go with Anchor, um, the Power IQ from my understanding is still Calcom and anyone that uh, has like the Power, Q, Power IQ 2.0 or uh, 3.0, I would stay away from those. The ones that just say Power IQ, um, they're probably an older standard uh, and probably for cost savings and everything. And those ones for me have worked. Um, so that's worth it. Um, now, the reason you want to have the right battery is because something you're going to see when you're having the wrong battery is buffer overflow error. Um, if you see that, it's almost always going to be your battery. So check that and then try several batteries until you have one that works for you. 
I, I also did some tests where I removed the power from the SSD while I was recording RAW onto it just to see what would happen. And what ended up happening in almost every single case that I did this in is that the camera didn't register that it was unplugged. Instead, it actually kept thinking it was recording. The time code kept running and it kept having the little red dot on there. So I thought it was recording. Um, eventually, after about 10 to 30 seconds, you know, you see buffer overload error and it stops recording. Every time I did that, I would go back in and I would look and see, uh, did it finish recording? Did it actually record in the 30 seconds that it's been unplugged? That it still registered that it was recording? No, it didn't. If you're not careful and the cord becomes unplugged, you're gonna have to re-record whatever you just filmed. Benefits. There's three huge benefits to using this method over just regular CFast cards. Um, these might be different for you. Um, they really work for me. The first one is longer record times. Simply put, you can get like two terabyte SSDs, no problem, for the same price as like a 500 gigabyte uh, CFast card. It, that's crazy. You can record all day long with that. Like, well, not all day long, but like long enough um, for more, most situations. Now, that ties into the second benefit, which is lower cost. You can get a one terabyte SSD for, I want to say, three, four hundred Canadian. CFast cards right now are 256 gigabytes for like 450 Canadian. It's not worth it. It's so expensive for, the, for, for not the same thing. And finally, the last thing I will say is the convenience factor. Now, it's not as convenient. When I say convenience factor, I don't mean that it's convenient in the sense that you can plug the card in there and just go and shoot. It's not convenient because you do have the cables that you have to worry about and you do have the SSD that you have to find a place to mount. Um, the convenience I'm talking about is in post-production and trying to deliver to clients. It's already on the hard drive to deliver. Not only that, CFast card readers can be incredibly hard to find. A lot of places don't stock them. Not only that, a lot of CFast readers don't work properly for whatever freaking reason. I don't get it. Um, I have the SanDisk one, it works wonderful, but I've heard other people who have the Atomos ones or others, they don't work sometimes with some cards. So that's really weird for me. It should work no problem, but anyway, um, I just like the fact that I can take the hard drive, plug it into my computer, done. I don't have to worry about, you know, making sure, oh my God, I have to fully unload this card because otherwise like on the day, I have to unload this card right now, so I have to have my CFast card reader. Oh, I forgot my CFast card reader. I guess I'm done recording raw. Risks. There are a lot of risks, but for the most part, they can all be mitigated. The first one is if the battery gets unplugged, you're going to have to turn off your camera and plug it back in and turn it back on. It's that simple. Um, there's no locking mechanisms to keep the USB in or anything like that. So, you know, you just have to be a little careful there. Um, the SSD becoming unplugged. Now, the SSD does have a lock, which is great. Um, however, if, you know, nothing is idiot proof. If it gets tugged there hard enough, maybe it will come out. I didn't try with mine because I don't want to break it, but you can try with yours. Um, and then the next thing here um, is um, cabling issue. So one of the bigger ones that you're going to find, I think, is snagging. Um, you know, if you were putting your, you know, hand inside the grip, you want to make sure that, 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 that your thumb isn't going to be snagging on the cable. So you have to make sure that they don't, aren't there. If you're, you know, running, gunning and, and really tight and you go through a, a doorway tightly, and then the cord right here snags on a handle, you could ruin your entire thing right there. Um, so be careful with that, you know? And on top of that, if you're constantly taking the cables in, putting them back in, flexing them, 
and anything like that, they are cables just like any other cable. Eventually, they will fail. Um, it's another point of failure that you have to take into account. So, what does this mean? This means that, you know, the old saying of anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So, you got to be careful in the first place and make sure you have backups of things. Backups, I would suggest, is an extra SSD. Don't buy a single two terabyte SSD. Buy two one terabyte SSDs. It, it, it just makes more sense. If one of them screws up, you still have another SSD that's going to work. You know, um, the next thing is don't just rely on, you know, one single USB battery. Have two that you know work for sure. Because on the day, if one of them drops and stops working or anything like that, the buddy's, you know, pocket one might not work. So you need to know that the two that you have will work. Um, the next thing is the cables. Now, I'm not paid to say this. I haven't actually bought a second pair yet. I'm still considering what I'm going to do. Um, but I really would recommend buying two copies. Um, and the reason being is eventually those cables will fail. That They're built really well. Um, and I don't think they're going to fail anytime soon. But for people who are like really use their things heavy and, and everything like that and are bashing into things or... Um, you know, running gunning a lot or, or not paying attention um, and, and they will eventually fail just like every other cable will eventually fail. Some fail sooner than others. Now on top of this, um, you know, you have the crimping uh, like of the cables and then you also, how I have mine set up is it's coming out of the door of my CFAST slot and then the door is just shut on top of the cable. So the cable comes out and then shut on top. And it's not really putting much, if any, pressure on the cable, but it is putting a little bit of pressure there. And over time, that area will become more sensitive, especially if I'm bending it a lot. So you want to take that into account and be careful, okay? Um, the last thing, let's see here, the last thing I would do is own at least one CFAST card. On to setups. Everybody's setup is going to be different. My setup uses small rig parts. It uses an SSD to 3.5 inch uh, mounting bracket um, and a custom made little prototype that I made for uh, um, combining them together. Um, you can get like the, the mounting bracket as like a dual hard drive thing, which I think is pretty cool. Um, people who use V mount batteries. Um, like I said, they use Velcro to attach the SSD to the back of the battery. Um, however you determine you want to do your setup, you have to pay attention to a few key things. First is cable placement. You don't want to snag the cables on everything. Everything has to be tucked in neat and tidy. The next thing is portability. You know, um, are you going to be running gunning? Are you going to be on sticks all day? You know, are you going to be on a gimbal and then back off the gimbal and then back onto the sticks? Um, you know, it, it all depends on how you plan on moving. You have to take that into account when you're trying to figure out how to set yours up. My setup might not work for yours. Next is what I would consider very important as well is a professional look. You know, if you show up to set and you build out your camera and it looks like garbage, and you have like, you know, these cables just, you know, all willy nilly all over the place. In reality, no one should care as long as you get the job done. But some clients might look at that as unprofessional. Moving on to ordering. As far as I know right now, there's only one person selling these. And that's a man on Facebook. I'll put his name right here. Um, and he is... Marion Montano. Yeah, I think I said that right. Montano. Um, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name here. Um, he's on Facebook. He's great to deal with. Um, he was really helpful. We talked a lot back and forth trying to figure out, um, you know, some of the errors I was having and everything like that. Um, and um, he, he was just a pleasure to deal with. Um, yeah. He, he gives us, he gave me some customization options as well as 
Um, I've seen others um, on, the, on the forums and, and the Facebook groups, some. The, the two options he gave me for the standard cable, that's just CFAST to SSD, is the specific lengths of the cables. So from the CFAST uh, card to the SSD, what length would you like that cable to be? The next one is the length of the uh, USB to power SATA. How, how long do you want that to be? Um, he will customize those lengths for you. The next thing that's kind of cool is, he, I know he does have an option. I'm not sure if he's selling them yet, but I, I have seen pictures where the cable that goes in uh, to the CFAST uh, card area, um, on the one I have, it's built in. You can't, you can't take the cable out of the CFAST card thing. But I know that he does have some that, um, I don't know if he's selling them, but, but he can, that, that they're detachable. Now, I'm not a fan of that per se because I just see that as one more point of failure where it, it, it could, if it, you know. But that being said, if the cable snags or something like that, at least you're not destroying the cable and it might, it'll probably still work when you plug it back in. When, from what I understand, people who are interested in those, they take the little window on the CFAST door out and then they can just plug it in and out of, out of there. Um, you know, that's, you got to use, uh, you know, rubbing alcohol to get the glue to, you know, loosen from the door and the little window there. It's a lot of work and I'm not sure I'm comfortable doing that with mine. So I'm, I'm more than happy with the cable that's attached. Um, and the last customization option, the one he did offer me, which is available, but there's a little bit of a longer lead time on these ones is um, an MSATA version. And the reason that's interesting and significant is that um, SSDs take five volts, MSATAs take 3.3 volts. The reason we need the battery in the first place is that um, the CFAST cards take, you know, 3.3 volts or whatever it is. Um, so you can't power the SSDs off of them, but you can power MSATA SSDs because they're 3.3 volts or whatever it is. So instead of just like, you know, the one, the, the two cables coming out uh, of the thing that's, you know, they're wrapped together, instead you have like four cables coming out of the door. And M set of SSDs, I think they're only like slightly more expensive than regular SSDs. So you might want to consider that. The only downside is they're not really in an enclosure. So you're going to have to figure that out. I, I, I you know, I, I'm doing so much and I did so many tests with SSDs that I didn't take any time to look at what you could do there, but I'm sure there's super simple solutions for someone who, you know, spends the time to look for it. Um, beyond that, let's think about pricing now. The version I bought is 80 euros shipped to your door uh, at this current time. The MSATA version is 100 euros uh, shipped to your door at this current time. I don't know if those prices are going to stay that way, if they're going to increase. I mean, he builds them by hand. And, you know, I, I'm not sure, like, I, I don't want to speak for him. Um, I don't know how much the detachable cable one is. I assume it's probably more. I didn't ask because I'm not interested in it. Overall costs, you know, it, when you consider what you need besides what Marion sends you, um, the overall cost is going to be the 80 euros for, for the uh, adapter which I think is like 150 Canadian. I might be wrong there, it might be a little bit less. But anyway, so there's that. Then you need an SSD. Um, you know, you can get a one terabyte right now for I think three, 350. So to get, we're at now like 450, 500. Then you need a USB battery. I got mine for $25, I think, um, Canadian. So all in all, we're looking at you know, 475 to 525 um, for one terabyte of recording. Um, now, consider the fact that it's $450 Canadian for a 256 gigabyte hard drive, uh, not hard drive, uh, CFast card. That's crazy. I mean, those prices are such a ripoff. It doesn't You'd have to spend the entire cost of the camera 
just to have enough media and CFAST cards to record all day. Like, anyway, that's besides the point. So, all in all, I really recommend this. I think it's going to be great for a lot of people. Um, if you have any questions or comments or if I've gotten anything wrong, please, please, please let me know. Um, you know, I did a lot of testing. Some of the testing I did um, was I only have a 500 uh, gigabyte drive. So what I would do is I would take that sucker and I would record the full 69 minutes of it from fully empty to fully full. Um, and then I would go back, initialize the card to erase it, and reset the time code. And I reset the time code so that I could see if there was an error, when did it happen, just out of curiosity. With my current setup right now, I went for seven, I, I repeated that exercise seven straight times without any issues. And every single battery, um, before this one, every other batteries um, I tested at least four times to see. And I didn't just test them at 24p, which I know like technically it's the same bit rate regardless, but I was just curious and I tested at 30, I tested at 60 and I just, you know, picked different ones for different tests just to see what was going to go on, um, you know. I, I, I think this is going to work for a lot of people and if you have any questions or comments again please let me know. I'm Adam and thanks for watching.